Welcome to the Running a Demo Model tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to use one of our demo models, the gas turbine engine, to demonstrate the basic building blocks of the Thermolip toolbox. First, we'll show you where to find the demos. Then we're going to go over the basic features of the Thermolip toolbox and observe the behavior when it runs. And finally, we'll do a couple of modifications to make our model more dynamic. But before we do all of that, I'm going to go over a theoretical explanation of the gas turbine engine. This is the Brayton cycle of the gas turbine engine. It mainly has three components. A compressor, a combustion chamber, and an expansion turbine. Air is first passed through a compressor to increase its pressure. Ideally, this is an isentropic compression. In the combustion chamber, the compressed air is mixed with a fuel. In our case, that would be methane. As the name indicates, combustion takes place raising the overall temperature of the mixture and generating heat energy. In the expansion turbine, air is expanded and heat energy is transformed into mechanical energy. This can be further fed into a generator to generate electricity. Now let's take a look at how such a system looks as a thermolib model. The first step is to open our demo model. I'm going to now switch to MATLAB. So here we are in MATLAB. I have Thermolib here already installed, so one way to access the demo models is actually to type the name of the model at the command line. So in this case, I would just type demo gas turbine. And the model is opened. Another way to open demo models is to go to help demos and then find the Thermolip toolbox under Simulink. Here we have Thermolip Systems Library and if we click on that we can see the list of all the available demo models. We're just going to scroll down to Applications and then Gas Turbine and click the Open Model Here link. This also opens the model for us. Let's take a look at some of the components in this model. First and foremost, every Thermolib model or subsystem should have a setup block. In this demo and most other demo models, it's located at the top left edge of the model. This block makes sure that all the thermodynamic data that the model needs to carry out its calculations are loaded into the MATLAB workspace. I'm going to double click on it to show you how it looks. So, basically, here we define which species we will use in our model. For the Brayton cycle, we need water, nitrogen and oxygen to compose air, methane, and CO2, which results from the reaction between oxygen and methane. By clicking the Add button, we can see which species are available in our database, and then we can select whichever ones we need, for example, if I select carbon monoxide and I click Add, it is added to my list of selected species and it will be available to all of the Thermolib blocks in the model. Please note that the Thermolib blocks in this model will be able to see and use only these selected components. Now let's take a look at the main components of our process. To model the Brayton cycle in Thermolib, we select the following components. An air source and a compressor a methane source, a mixer to mix the methane and air before the combustion, a combustion chamber where the reaction takes place, and a gas turbine to turn heat energy into mechanical energy. In the combustion chamber, we define our combustion reaction. As you can see here, this is methane burning with oxygen to produce water and carbon dioxide. The model also includes a calculation of the thermal efficiency of the process, basically how much power we generated relative to the lower heating value of the fuel burned. We take the power generated by the turbine, deducting the power used by both compressors, and divide the results by the actual amount of methane fuel used, volume flow times methane heating value. The gray blocks that you see here are displays used to keep track of the signal. We'll get to these shortly. 
Now let's go back to the whole model and take a closer look at the connections between the blocks. First, I will run the model for a short time to highlight the bus structure of these connections. To simulate the actual physical flow between the components, Thermolib uses a well-defined bus structure called a flow bus. I'm going to show you that by attaching a bus selector to one of these connections. Go to the library browser, find ourselves a bus selector, and attach it here. Let's take a look at the bus. The flow bus always has the following elements that define the flow at any point in time. The most significant are the current mass flow, the temperature, and pressure. Other elements store the entropy, enthalpy, and so on. The question is how does Thermolib know which components make up this flow? The element Ψ defines in which ratios are the compounds available. This goes back to the setup block we talked about earlier. If you remember, our model had hydrogen, water, nitrogen gas, oxygen, methane, CO2 as selected species. So a value of 0, 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0, 0 says we have a mixture of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. That's air. Fortunately, we don't have to bother with determining Psi ourselves, using source blocks, we can use the interface to define our mixture. I'll show you a quick example by opening the thermodynamic systems library, going to sources, and adding a mixture source. Double click on it, and then you can see here the compounds that you selected in your setup block. In this case, we have by default 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and that's air. To keep track of the flow bus's contents, we can use either flow displays, shown here, or the sensor blocks, these here. The flow display is a more readable display block. It displays basically the bus contents, including the element's name and its unit. For instance, we have here the temperature is 562 Kelvin. And here we can see the components of this flow. If we need to keep track or select other values that are not part of the regular flow bus, we can use a sensor block. Let's take a look at the sensor block over here. In this sensor block, we're measuring the mass flow in kilograms per second, the pressure in bar, and the temperature in C. We can add new measurements, and the list of physical values that we can measure is a lot more extensive than what is available in the flow display. For instance, we can select the humidity of the mixture. Display blocks are just that, they're just basically displays or end blocks. Sensor blocks calculate other thermodynamic values and output their selected value so that it can be used by other simulating blocks, for example, controllers. We run the model by clicking simply the Start Simulation button. As you'll notice, this model will finish simulating very quickly. The reason for that is most of the inputs remain constant during the simulation time, so it's more of an static state. Let's take a closer look at the combustion chamber. The flow coming into the chamber is a mixture of wet air and methane. The wet air is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and water. The rest is methane. Once combustion has taken place, we can see here that there is no longer any methane in the mixture, and the percentage of water, as expected from our chemical reaction, increased. The temperature of the result has also increased to 1030 degrees Celsius. The output now goes to the gas turbine, where it experiences a pressure drop by expanding from 7 to 1 bar and around a 400 degrees Celsius temperature drop. 
Here, heat energy from the combustor is transformed into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy, this P uh, gas turbine, is passed via a go-to plug to the thermal efficiency calculation. We calculate our efficiency is 26.5%. The final step in our tutorial is modifying the model. Here we encourage you to play around with the model. For instance, we'll change the outlet pressure of the compressors to see how that affects the efficiency. So right now the outlet pressure is at 7 bar, written here in Pascal. There's a small slider gain block that we'll use to adjust the pressure. First we'll set the simulation time to infinity. and run the model. Now that the model is running, I'll open the slider gain block and now raise the pressure to twice what it is already, so 14 bar. As you can see, the thermal efficiency increased to around 32%, that's a 5% increase. If we try to lower the pressure at the outlet of the compressor to that at the inlet of the gas turbine, we will see that the system does not produce any work anymore. So I'm just going to lower it to around 1 bar. Right now it's around 2.7. We'll lower it some more to... That should be enough. So now the output pressure at the compressor is 1 bar, equal to the output pressure of the gas turbine. We can see already that the uh, gas turbine is hardly producing any work and the thermal efficiency is getting close to zero. If I lower it any more, it's almost zero. Try varying other inputs such as the output pressure of the gas turbine or the combustion rate and the combustion chamber. As a next step, we recommend that you check the combined cycle power plant demo. In this example, we built on the previous one by adding the Rankine cycle or the steam turbine. It uses the heat from the turbine to be used in the steam turbine cycle. The exhaust gas from the turbine and the Brayton cycle has a high enough temperature to power the steam cycle. You'll find more information explained in the help. Thank you for listening.